my icom ic7610 it's got a problem when i power it up let's power it up and uh, it keeps losing the time and the date which is getting a bit annoying to be honest I'm going to the menu I have to keep setting the date and time I have actually got it plugged into the internet so it does it for me at the moment but it shows that the internal backup battery is gone so this video really is about replacing that battery without having to remove it from the board I don't relish the thought of desoldering that battery with hot air or with a soldering iron. I don't want to risk damaging this radio. It is a very expensive radio. So we're going to do it a simpler way. Uh, let's get on and I'll show you how we're going to actually do it. The ICOM IC7610 uh, internal battery. This battery here maintains the voltage on IC4521 which is a real-time clock module and it's a RX 8803L rated from 1.6 to 5.5 volts now to get this battery off it's quite a hard job unless you've got some hot air equipment but then even if you've got hot air equipment you've got to mask all of this area off um, to stop obviously the components lifting or moving and it's not really something I relish doing and I don't really want to risk damaging the board by putting a soldering iron on this battery um, it could end up ripping pads it could do anything really so I think the simplest solution is to simply remove R4221 which is part of the constant current charging circuit for this battery um, via D221 and I think what we're going to do basically is remove that resistor uh, which then if we've once removed it we can then bring a, a positive wire from a coin cell um, which we're going to manufacture, which we're going to make rather um, and just attach the positive wire into either this pad, this pad and just bring it out to the battery and that hopefully then should be a far simpler solution and the zero volt reference we can just pick up from anywhere so if you have a look at the circuit diagram this is the resistor we need to remove again this is the battery so we're going to leave the battery in situ, we're not going to remove it at all, it can sit there for the rest of its life. Uh, but we're going to remove R4221, and it's a 3K3 resistor. Now I believe the circuit diagram is wrong on this, it shows this Rayleigh being 13 volts, which is not, it's 3.3. But what we'll effectively do is we'll manufacture a small coin cell with a Chotsky diode in series with a positive lead. And effectively what that will give us is this circuit so effectively we'll create this off off the actual PCB so this will be the coin cell holder with the battery in it this will be the diode attached to the positive lead and then we'll just take this down to this point here so we'll solder it to there or there um, and actually that runs down onto pin 3 so that then will hold the supply high for us and the simple reason for doing it this way is as I say I don't really want to put too much heat on the board I don't want to put hot air on the board I don't want to uh, risk damaging any of the other components it's an expensive radio and it just isn't worth the risk so I'll show you making up this little module which is going to be mounted off the board and then we'll get down and I'll show you on the main PCB where the the resistor is that we're going to remove Okay, let's have a quick look at what we're going to need. We're going to need two pieces of wire, red and black. We're going to need the coin cell, coin cell holder, the diode, and a bit of heat shrink just to put on afterwards. And effectively what we're doing is trimming this lead, putting this onto the positive terminal there. So we'll attach the anode of this diode onto the positive terminal there, and the black wire straight from the bottom. And that will just go to the ground reference of the radio, and then from the cathode of the diode, 
which will look something along the lines. And we'll just take the red wire and take it down to the board to the appropriate position. Now what I do, I made this 20, 30 years ago, this black of wood with a bulldog clip on it. And it's always been very useful to me in uh, simply just open it up and you can place whatever you want in and such. And what we're going to do is solder this diode to this pin here. So let's get a little bit of solder on that and we'll get that done. Good idea to team your contacts first. And the same with the diode. And let's just get that soldered on. Let's just get these wires stripped. Again, we just want to tin these wires. Let's tin that negative contact. Get the wire on. Let's get the negative on. And that's basically it. A little bit of string sleeve. Cover up the connections. And now, what we needed to do is test it. So, if we strip these two ends. Set the corner cell out. Should drop the coin in, cell in. And that's in. And now let's just check the voltage on it. And hopefully. We have 3.12 volts, which will be fine because the uh, real-time clock um, preferred operating voltage is around about 3 volts, but it will run from 1.6, I think, up to 5 point something volts. And that's all we need to do. So we've, we've made that piece. That's complete now. Well, the third thing to do is to take the base off. That's all the screws out. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And hopefully we should just be able to lift the bottom off now. There we go. A little bit tighter than I thought. And there is the big reveal. Just looking at the board from the back. Uh, the battery is actually just there. Let me zoom into that a little bit for you. Okay, so here we have the battery. This is the diode. This is the small resistor we need to remove. And we can probably solder to this point here. And by taking this resistor out, we'll just isolate this battery from the rest of the board. And as I said, the reason I don't want to use the hot melt gun 
is there really is all of these larger components around here um, I don't really want to risk damaging the board so this this is an option anyway just simply to remove that resistor and then solder in our uh, coin cell holder uh, with a uh, CR2030 battery inserted into it into just a, in this point just there I'll show you that just just on this this capacitor just here okay so we're going to remove our 4421 which is in series with this battery uh, it's just part of the constant current charging circuit for it so let's get that removed and we should then be dropping our uh, positive lead either at this point or onto this capacitor whichever is easiest to solder to I'll try and let you see this but I've got to get down here with some magnification to see this is a very small component there is a solder on the iron Right, I think we've got that off. Fortunately, so small it ended up on the tip of my soldering iron and it's disappeared. Just going to clean up the area we've soldered so we can get a good view of it. Just make sure we've not, not shorted anything out. Let's just make sure we've isolated the battery. So, if we test the battery voltage. We've got 0 0.6 volts on this leg of the resistor that we took off, we've just got the same. And on the opposite side, we've got nothing. So we're quite free now just to solder our battery wire to this capacitor, this capacitor, or just here. And we can leave the old battery in situ. This is our battery holder, or coin cell holder. I think I'm just going to mount this over here with some double sided tape on the back, bring the wires through and basically solder them onto there just need to make this a little bit shorter, it's a little bit longer at the moment uh, strip and tin those well, we've stripped and tinned the coin cell holder we've got some twin stick type pads which I'm going to stick the unit over here so let's get that done so I'm just going to stick that against this wall here or chassis path there. This one needs to go a bit lower than that because the height of the coin cell. I'll we'll bring these wires around here and we'll tie them under there. And let's just get that soldered on. I think we're going to solder it to the capacitor, seems to be the easiest point. Get a little bit of solder on there and on the, to one leg of the capacitor. And we'll just drop the positive wire onto there. And that's soldered on nicely. And the negative point, we just need to pick a point up on the chassis. Yeah, just probing around uh, this first pad next to the battery minus this one here. That'll do for our negative pickup, so we can solder to that one. Now just tin it first. And we can just drop that onto there. Down onto here, make it a little bit tidier I think. That's better. That looks a lot better. And let's just test it for continuity. Uh, testing to ground for the negative and hopefully there should be nothing there which is correct that's the negative on the battery and we've isolated the battery just to summarize we've removed R4221 we've sold the positive lead from the battery to the cathode of D4221 but we've actually soldered it at this point here onto this capacitor and uh, looking at the circuit diagram the, the uh, capacitor does go back to zero volt so you could put the leads across there I opted to do it slightly differently I could have put this negative lead across the cap up to that point there uh, but that pad there just seemed easier to solder to to be honest 
We don't want to risk damaging the capacitor. I've already put one lead on some one side of it. So let's put the coin cell in. Let's just we've put the coin cell in. Let's do a, do a quick voltage check. And we've got three point three point two volts. That'll be fine. As the timer IC can uh, be controlled between 1.6 and 5.4 recommended is around about 3 volts so that should be fine so hopefully that should be keeping the, the date and time high now uh, we've just got to have to put it all back together now and set it now the battery is in its holder over there I might put a little bit more tape around that as in the twin stick just to make sure it doesn't fall off but other than that now it's ready to uh, be tested ok the only thing to do now is put it back together I put a little bit of tape just in that top corner, just in case the battery does fall forward or anything, because I don't want to short in the case. And let's just get him put back together. If you, I'll take in the base off. It does pay just to loosen these screws on the handle if you've got it on there, just very gently. It just helps. Yeah, okay, it's trying to power him up. Let's get the DC power supply on. And let's power it up. Well, it's a good sign it's still powered up. Like that there. And currently we're ticking along at 00, 0 0.2, so let's go to the menu. Set. Date, time, date. And it is the fifth today. Set that. Time is 11.52. Set. Okay, so we set the date and time. Let's switch it all off, turn the DC power supply off and come back in 10 minutes and see if it's all working. As you can see, his date and time is set up there. Let's power him off. Well, it's been a good 10 15 minutes. Let's uh, put the DC power supply back on. And let's power him up and see if it's kept its date and time. Ah, oh, that seems to have worked fine. 12 13. The picture says 12 13. So that will seems to have kept his date and time. So I'm happy with that. I think that's working now. Yep, that's all okay. And if I need to, I can plug it into the internet, which uses this time.nist.gov for, for a more accurate reference. But I wanted to make sure the battery backup was working first. Well, that's, that's just another way of doing it. Um, the soldering wasn't particularly beautiful, but um, it's very hard when you're down at those sort of magnification levels to make it look pretty. Uh, but it, it, it's doing the job, and that's all it's got to do. Well, it's just another way of doing it without having to remove the battery. I didn't really relish the thought of that.